just hung up. Morning, y'all. Another lovely morning. The sun's still shining. Yesterday's question, sunscreen. Good to see most of you are putting it on and understanding the importance of putting it on when we play this outdoor sport. So today's question, what would you rather do? Buggy, golf cart buggy. I think we call them buggies, you call them golf carts in the States. Or walk it. Post comments down below, what's your preferred way of getting around? Obviously we're always in a buggy when we film, which people notice, and that's because we've always got the cameras to carry bags or pull trolleys with the cameras in the bag. It's basically impossible. It makes it a very unenjoyable day. But what would you prefer? So when me and Eldest over there go and play, we just walk around and carry, but it is quite a short course. So what factors would make you change your mind as well? Post those comments down below. Right, I want to share this with you, and I know it'll upset some people, but I find this kind of journalism and non-answering of direct questions exactly why corporate and journalists often bully the ordinary person. Because I get this kind of response from companies when I complain, like gas and electric, those kind of things, where you have to go through loads of layers. Put comments down below, let me know what you think. This, this person, I think, is disgusting. I was just, like, basically, I'm just contacting Mark from Mercury Press. We're putting together this article and just come, like getting in touch with you for a legal right of reply and it just to give you an opportunity to respond to those claims that are in that email. Did you hear my question? I'm just literally just asking you for those comments, please. Um, I'll, I'll try again. I'll try again. This is, you're a journalist, I presume. Is that correct? Journalist, journalist. Okay, thank you. Um, so my question, uh, this is the second time I've asked it in this call. I'll ask it a third time because uh, I asked it obviously a lot earlier. Uh, have you responded to my emails with an email? Because you said you did and I haven't had it. I, I, sent, I replied to your email just asking if we could have that right of reply in the comments. Did, um, did you reply to my emails I sent to that email you sent to me? The one asking about personal contacts and embed codes and if you included the other polls. Could you respond Could you respond to those or have you not responded to those? I don't know the people that I've spoken to personally. I'm a, I'm a journalist for national... Sorry, community. excuse me. I've asked me if you can respond to my emails. I've asked you, I've been very polite and answered your question pretty quickly and then you won't answer any of my questions. I don't understand that. And I, I don't know the, the people personally that I've no, no, can you respond in an email, please? Can you email respond to them, please? Yes, please. I, I can do that. I thought you said you already had. So today's swing, he emailed me saying that he loses his balance as he comes through the ball, hits a nice little functional draw, but then has a big miss left when it does go wrong. So we're going to talk about what the possible causes of this could be. Um, I think there's some interesting points in this one, which is why I point it out because of his description which we'll talk about as we get going. But let's talk about his kind of one miss left when he generally hits nice shots, he says, and his lack of balance on what that might do. Have you included all three polls in your article? That is a yes or no question. We're just approaching you for a right reply on the comments that are in that email. So is that a yes or a no? required to do. Is that a yes or a no? It's just what we're legally required to do when we get comments like this, like when we speak to people, Matt. Yeah. Are you ignoring my question? So let me try again. It's a very direct question. Have you included all three polls in your article or not? That is a... Oh, she's hung up. So this player hits good shots, then the old quick left. And when I look at the video, I am guessing it looks, it's impossible to really tell, but it looks possibly like he catches it out of the heel. The club is lining up a bit this way, and as it comes through, there's a big turn of the face, and it kind of straightens up further on, which suggests a massive heel strike. That doesn't always mean cuts. That could go quick left as well. First port of call is you must check your strike if you're hitting one bad one out of a few. And that's often the way people are making the same action. They just miss strike one. If we look at this player's swing, Stands quite a long way away from it. Then we get the standing up of the shaft and they're coming right up onto their toes. They come through, which is where the fall over comes from. So let's talk of that posture change that starts off. People who stand this way, big gaps, they hate standing where I would want them to stand, which is feeling much more like their arms, a bit more underneath their shoulders. Driver's slightly in front of you. But for you, you want to feel much more under your shoulders rather than this big fish for it. 
that then might give us some chance of getting some paths lining up. And when I mean paths, I don't mean out to in or into out, I mean paths of the moving sweet spot with the standard sweet spot or the stationary sweet spot of the ball. So I could be straight here, I could be straight here, or I could be straight here. So lining up sweet spot, better strikes. So easy checkpoint to start us off. Let's get the club just hanging down from the shoulders, just under in front of the toes. And at the same time, we want the hands literally hanging just under the toes as well, kind of just in front. So basically hands and arms underneath your shoulders. And I want you to make a few swings from there. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how you use your feet. Can I just confirm that you're happy that I'm filming this? Yeah, sure. Great, thanks, thanks. Staff practice to hang up on people if they don't give the answers they want. That, right, I'm, that's a simple question. I'm coming into this, you know, fresh, so I'm looking at Oh, you've not answered my question. We'll get on to the email in a second. Well, you're not answering our question either. No, because I can't answer your question, can I, if you think about it, because I don't understand the context that any of it's in because I haven't seen the article, so I need well, to be careful. Oh, you're talking over me. You talked over me then, I hadn't finished. Can I finish my sentence or do you, do you need to talk over me? Is that what you need to do? She's getting anywhere, so she said, please have a look at the email in question and reply to me on that. And that would be the end of the conversation. Okay, next drill, indoors. Put your feet, no shoes on, on some cushions. Basically, make your ground unstable. An unstable surface will make your unstable movement with your feet almost impossible to do. So generally, we play in stable shoes on stable surfaces and then that allows us to be unstable because we've got a good range of balance. What I want you to do is make the ground very unstable with your new posture feeling that bit closer. Just make a few swings indoors doing this, feeling how your feet are pushing on these pillows. I want you to feel almost like it's going in a straight line to the right foot to the left. So finishing almost on the middle of your left foot to slight heel. Get a feeling of what it feels like to go up on your toes which throws your hands out, stands the club up for lots of people and causes that kind of full forward movement. This is a great idea for people who struggle to interact with the floor. Not interacting with the floor that well, not for everyone because you've got some world class players who jump, certainly can chuck sweet spots around every now and then, causes the bad strikes. And maybe there's your quick left. Let's answer your questions. What's up, bro? What's up? Not sure whether I've got a question for you or it's just a rant. No, uh, no one likes a rant. Wondering your thoughts on the way non-members are treated at golf clubs um, around where I live, which is in Southampton on the south coast. We tend to get a little down upon. I mean, I'm personally not a member of a club because I, I just don't play enough golf to warrant the price. Sometimes you're made to feel like you're not welcome. As I was your views on YouTube. Cheers, bro! So I will try and answer your question, unlike the theme of today's video. <laughs> yeah, non-members get treated awfully as a generalizer. Believe me, we go and film the courses around the world and we get some funny looks because obviously we've got the camera so people are like really staring and making you feel, I agree, uncomfortable because I think members are just being defensive of their course but I think it's something they need to be careful of. And this is something that hasn't changed when I was at members clubs. There was always a who are they kind of thing. Oh, there's someone paying a green fee, which kind of like keeps the club afloat. Oh, this Thursday, is it? That's green fee day, is it? So yeah, I agree. I think it's something that clubs should work. And I think clubs that are struggling now do work. They realize that the green fee income is essential for their business model. Where back in the day when golf clubs had um, waiting lists, Obviously you could use that kind of them and us ideas, but I agree with you. It's something I think more clubs need to work on to try and keep this game as inclusive as possible. Right, so where this has ended is they just will not answer my questions and I'm pushing pretty hard. They kind of confirmed in and around and I'm not allowed to show you the emails because one of my questions is can I show my audience this email exchange because I've got one of those disclaimers at the bottom and they just won't respond to that one. I've always think it's a shame, just be transparent. And then my other question which they kind of, then they're not able to control if the link for the video embedded all link goes in the article. So my question is, is you're happy to publish an article about one poll. They say all three are included. They've emailed me to say all three are included. Um, but they got no control over the video. The video is the defining piece, but they're still happy to write the article. I mean, that to me just seems crazy. That's like me doing a review on a product without testing the product. I mean, it's journalism, isn't it? I mean, just people wonder why I get frustrated with them. Right, last idea I really want to stress is you've got to start monitoring strike point on the face. The info you gave was all around kind of movement-based ideas. You didn't tell me any of the strike patterns. 
got to start there. If I hit this chip and I strike it and it goes the distance I want, so there you go, that chip's gone too far. And I struck it quite well. So now I'm going to think of club head speed, to control ball speed, maybe land angle, getting more height, to control the distance. So I'm going to actually focus on the issue. Equally going too hard, I can't tell if my speed or not was correct. I need to then concentrate on strike. See where I'm going here. Without the strike information, your quick lefts, it's very hard, if not impossible, to know why they're caused. For me as a coach and for you as a student, and it also means that you waste your time, limited time for most of us, on what you're practicing because you're not working from strike out. So mark the face, you can put tape on the face, might show you strike patterns, will affect ball though. You can put lines on the ball like a black marker pen line, make sure you line that up with the face, hit some, and it might give you some readings. Go and see someone who's got GC2HMT or GC quad like me, it sees strike, we're measuring strike every lesson. I'm looking at strike patterns around the numbers they deliver around what shot they want to see it starts from strike and always moves out there we go you could not script that could you salmon and vegetables tonight I'm going all last telling on myself so let's just recap where we are I had an email from the people writing the article on behalf of the other people. <laughs> um, and it says I can send over my original video. What does that even mean? Like, you, I, I can't send you the whole file, it's massive, can I? I? I want it embedded from my channel so you can watch it in its YouTube state, which is where it's posted. I mean, I don't even understand if they understand there's a video posted on YouTube. It took me more than half a day to get them to say that. They purely just wanted a statement, out of context statement. What they really wanted was a reaction. A classic journalist, isn't it? I mean, post comments down below, what do you think? I know it's ranty, but it just really upsets me because I think some people have missed the point of a poll. They've been told to not make a point, just wait till the video which they ignored and continued to get angry. And now they continue to get angry when everyone could see. Now the video is posted, what? the whole process was about, yet still, they want blood. Which is fine, and I'll stand by my content and happy, always have been, always will be. It's them who need to maybe take a little look at themselves. And as for the journalists, if I wasn't me, so if this was about a, a, a person less confident, a person not understanding what's going on, they would have taken so much advantage. So they still haven't answered the question if I could include the emails, because if you would see how many times I asked simple questions, they've not answered that question, they've barely answered if the video would be included, even if I send it to them. Come on, down there. Let's hear it. Come on, it's crazy. I, I think this is so sad of today, and certainly a state that the media are in, which I can see why they're all struggling. I'm just saying, I'm really busy. I'm what? Oh, I'm not busy. I'm not busy. I'm not busy to be personally attacked. I I'm not busy. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I don't know what you're saying, Mark. Oh, that's the problem, because you don't answer any of the questions. Right. So you're happy. Well, just. You my question? I would like to know. Yeah, you're, that's standard practice. That's standard practice for you guys to hang up. So I'm kind of used to that, and it won't bode well for you on the video because it obviously just makes you look like you run away, which is a sad problem. But um, you're happy for the video not to be included in the article? Is that what you're saying? So the video that concludes the whole discussion, you're happy for that not to be included? Is that correct or not correct? No, I mean if you would like to send over the video. Oh, so I have to, you write the article. I have to send the video. Well, if you'd like the video... You, you as a journalist don't want to see the resolve. You want me to offer the resolve. Is that what you're saying? You just want to titillate. You don't want to see a resolve. You want me to do the work? I wanted some questions answered, basically, before I can comment on something I don't understand the context to. I'm not sure why that's so hard to understand. Mark, everything's outlined in the email. I'm afraid I am going to have to go. That's fine, that's fine. I think I think you've proven yourselves quite well on this video, what intention you've got. So that's cool by me. I think you've done very well. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks very much. I mean, if you would like to include a comment, that goes out to papers. We send it at 8.30 tomorrow morning. No, no, you, you, you carry on. I can't comment on something I've not seen or understand the context okay, of. Well, so you, Mark. I'm going to hang tough, on now. Okay, yeah, you, you, oh, you, I've got one more question. <laughs> This is the problem, peoples. This is the problem. 